Hello, welcome to the Kotlin Whisperer channel. In today's episode, we're going to cover another Kotlin collection known as the set. A set usually stores unique elements. Their order is usually undefined. Null elements are considered unique as well. Two sets are equal if they have the same size and for each element of a set, there is an equal element in the other set. To create a set, we can use the set of method. This will allow us to create an immutable set. Let us create a set of different heights. Let us print out this set of values. Run your code to see the output. As you can see, heights had two values of 200. However, when we print out the value of heights, there is only one existing 200 value. This is because sets have unique elements. Any repeated values will be ignored. To have a mutable set, we use the mutable set of construct. You can see our weights are displayed. A mutable set has write operations such as deleting and updating. There are different methods that are available to sets in the Kotlin language. One of them is the minus method. The minus method allows us to remove elements from a set. It accepts iterables such as arrays or lists or even singular values. This method is usually non-destructive and would require creating of a new array to see the newly stored results. Let us remove the 200 value from our heights. As you can see, our new set of heights does not include the 200 value. Similarly, you can add values in the same approach using the plus operator. This method allows you to add either an iterable or a singular value, similar to how the minus works. Let us add 400 as a weight to our set. Once you rerun your application, you will see the newly added values with our plus operator. Mutable sets, on the other hand, do have some extra methods that allows us to add values or even update them. Let us add 176 as a value to our weights. We can also try removing an existing value. These two methods are destructive and will cause an update on the existing mutable set. Let us look at the printed out results. There we have them. 176 has been added and the existing 96 has also been removed. There are several other methods that you can use within your set. You can check whether a set is empty by using the isEmpty method on every available set. This method usually returns a boolean. It will return true if there are no existing elements in the set. It will return false otherwise. As we can see, we know that our weights set is not empty. It returns the value as false. One thing to keep in mind, the add and the remove method both return booleans if the operation was successful. Similar to other collections in Kotlin, sets do have a contains function. This function will return true if an element is contained within the set. It will return false otherwise. Let us check whether 400 exists in our P400 set. There we have them. It contains the 400 value. That is perfect. As per the definition, the order of a set is generally undefined. However, the default implementation of sets in Kotlin is the linked hash set. A linked hash set would indicate that there is an order which the elements have been added onto the set itself. Therefore, this means that you can use the first and last methods from our extensions functions within collections in Kotlin. We can check for the last item using the dot last method. We can see our current last value is 89. 
Sets can also be created using their equivalent builder methods. And all builder methods that are used to create sets usually result in a mutable set. Let us create a set of names and add several values to it. We'll have our set being called names. You can provide the type in the generic brackets. Let's assume we are going to have strings. This type, however, can always be inferred from the method operations within the builder. Let us add several names. You can see all the names in the order in which they were added. This builder method gives you access to several set methods within them. You can remove items if you want to, add items, check whether it is containing another item or not, and so on and so forth. All methods available within mutable sets will also be available within the builder function. Similar to other collections within Kotlin, there are several other collection functions available for use. A very popular one is the map function. The map function allows you to transform an item within a map to a certain format that you want in common for all other items. Let us try and making all our names go to uppercase. Let us have our names dot map and then convert them to uppercase. If you print them out now, as you can see, all the names are now in uppercase. Similar to the map method, you could also have other methods like the iterator function that allows you to iterate through items and use their corresponding methods. Let's give an example of printing out each remaining item within our specific set. We could have our heights, get the iterator. We can use the for each remaining method. Within here, let us print every single item that we have in its square. With that, we have the square of all the items within that specific set. Sets are derived from their mathematical equivalents. The Kotlin collection package contains extension functions for popular operations on sets. This include finding intersections, merging, or even subtracting collections from each other. To merge any pair of collections into one, we can use the union function. This function has been built as an infix function, and you can use them without a set of the dot operator and the parenthesis to put in your parameters. Please take note that for ordered collections, the order of the operands is important in the resulting collection. The elements of the first operand go before the elements of the second. To find an intersection between two collections or elements present in both of them, we can use the intersect method. To find collection elements that are not present in another, you use subtract. All these functions are called in the infix format as well. Let's look at an example. Let us try and merge two sets, heights and width, using the union function. If you run this, you can find the merged heights and weight. We can also find elements that are in both sets. This is usually called an intersect, and we use the intersect infix function. Our heights and weights do not have anything common in between them, hence our empty array. Lastly, we can find elements that are not in the first set using the subtract infix function. There we have the items that are not in the height set. Lastly, you can also apply union, intersect, and subtract functions to lists. However, their resulting value will always be a set, even when the operation has been done on two lists. In such, all the duplicate elements are merged into one and the index access is made to not be available. That is it about sets with Kotlin. 
I hope this has been useful for you. Take time and read through the documentation and see anything more that you can do with sets and hope this helps you in your developer workflows. See you in the next episode.